Welcome to episode 175, Henry C. Part 1, From Selling Shoes on the Street to Multi-Millionaire. This is an outline of episode 175. Why do we study Henry C.? First, he's the richest man in the Philippines. Second, he started as a poor Chinese immigrant selling shoes on the streets of Manila. Third, he is the father of Philippine retailing. How often do you come here? Six times a week. Wow, really? Six times a week? Mm -hmm. I like to see a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Number one, thing, two things. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, here you can make a cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. His company starts with SM. What does SM stand for? It began with a dream. A young businessman with a deep sense of social consciousness and a desire to succeed. Thought of providing every Filipino with a pair of shoes. It was a simple goal envisioned right after the Second World War ravaged Manila. Henry C. was born in Chunzhou, Fujian Province, China in 1924. I bet you have no idea where we are right now, but this sea made this place the starting point of the Maritime Silk Road, a place that Marco Polo once called the busiest port in the world. And the iconic Twin Pagodas behind me have paid witness to more than 1,300 years of history. Chuanzhou is on China's southeast coast in Fujian province. At the age of 12, he followed his father and arrived in the Philippines. He worked 12 hours a day at his father's small Sari Sari store. Eager to study, he enrolled at Chiang Kai-shek College. <laughs> He was a good student. He graduated in five years despite not knowing any English when he began. Years passed, and their Sari Sari store prospered. The store was looted and burned. To make ends meet, he took to selling different things. Heartbroken, his dad left the Philippines and returned to China. Henry C. would stay in the Philippines to fight for another chance. He was just uh, selling anything that he can get uh, during the time of, the, of World War II. And uh, one of the things that he focused on were buying shoes from uh, some of the uh, GIs. Young Henry joined the booming buy and sell business with his partner. He saved enough money from peddling cheap American shoes. To improve his trade, he found innovative ways leading to the birth of his store called Shoe Mart or SM, which was the first air-conditioned shoe store. In 1949, he had a financial loan of 1 million pesos from China Bank in order to rebuild his business. Then he went to university. In 1950, he graduated with a two-year degree in commercial studies from Far Eastern University. Finally, in 1958, he opened his first shoe store. He was 34. The first Shoe Mart branch officially opened in 1958 in Rizal Avenue, Manila. This was the first air-conditioned shoe store that merchandised shoes in a very classy and inviting format. Just like any family business where the kids are ex expected to uh, help out in the business in whatever capacity. She started working for Schumann at the age of 20. Well, we have to work very hard. We have to uh, work about maybe more than all the other people in the company and that was expected of us. And I work uh, very long hours. Uh, my dad always said that if you don't know, if you don't know your job, just work long hours and you'll get to know it fast. Shoe Mart was first established in 1958 by Mr. Henry C. Sr. as a shoe store. 
Eventually, as he built uh, other stores, he began to incorporate the home furnishing, accessories, bags, luggages, apparel, and uh, that, be that made us a department store. In 1972, at the age of 48, he opened his first department store in Gepo, Manila. In 1960, SM Investments Corporation was incorporated and store chains have expanded. He opened the first Schumart store in Carriedo, which became SM Quiapo, the first SM Mall in 1972 during the martial law when there is an economic decline. 1972 was also the same year that Marcos imposed martial law in the Philippines. The martial law lasted nine years. The danger and the instability did not discourage him. Through the years, business steadily grew. And in 1985, sensing that the market was ready to move forward, SM City North Edza was opened. North Edza redefined the shopping experience for many Filipinos in the country and paved the way for more super malls that were to come. In the words of his elder daughter, Saracita, he are Henry C's four pillars. It's to work hard and uh, be determined, be persistent, and uh, be very focused. familia. I was selling shoes then. I guess you were born into it. So I was selling shoes when I was about eight years old. And, um, and I guess after that, then you feel obliged also to help out your parents. And I guess maybe my parents give us the guilt that we should really help out. So uh, one thing follow another. And so we find ourselves getting more and more, more involved in the business. In this episode, I cover the first 48 years of Henry C. as an entrepreneur. What have I learned today? First, three generations of entrepreneur. Henry C.'s father, Henry C. himself, his eldest daughter. The children are expected to work long hours to help the family business, but also to study. Second, Henry C. never lost faith in the Philippines, such as the burning down of his father's store in World War II and the martial law in the Philippines in 1972. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and leave your questions and comments below. My next video will be Henry C. from millionaire to the richest man in the Philippines. Wishing everyone peace and prosperity.